Shopping and gifting looks very different this year because of the pandemic, of course. More people are choosing to stay home and shop online. They're also rethinking their gifting selections. And with about two-thirds of Americans admitting to receiving an unwanted gift last year, one company is looking to disrupt the $125 billion gifting industry. How? By establishing what it calls choice-based gifting, allowing recipients to choose what they want. Joining us now is the founder of Loop & Tie, Sarah Rodell. Prior to starting her company, Sarah worked on Wall Street for a number of years. Sarah, as we mentioned, it's going to be a really different holiday season this year because of the pandemic. Tell us what you've seen so far in terms of the trends of gift giving, uh, not just this holiday season, but in the lead up to this holiday season. Absolutely. You know, I think the, the biggest um, shift this year is how we shift everything into the virtual world. And um, migrating the gift experience into that is no different. And so we've seen a significant increase in our business as companies are canceling holiday parties and still have that intrinsic desire to do something special and recognize, especially this year, um, how important their relationships are to them. So you mentioned companies. Corporate gifting is something that you've talked about and you've uh, encouraged companies to participate in as a way of engaging with workers who are remote and, and at home. What kind of repeat business is there from that? What's the feedback you've gotten so far? Sure. So, um, you know, as you mentioned, the way that Loop and Time is designed is around gift choice. Um, and the way that that works is that companies treat customers to their choice of gift. And um, the, the big reason we do that is because it drives engagement. And uh, what we're seeing from our companies that are giving gifts is that when they're using this tool, they're able to drive continued conversations. And a huge goal for them is to move out of a transactional kind of conversation into something that feels more human. And so um, as we see gifts are always important this time of year, that is an additional goal and something that um, we've designed for and, and support. So what kind of gifts are people choosing then? Are they choosing more experiential gifts? Are they choosing um, to donate to charities and nonprofits? Or are they choosing things for their home? Yeah, so we have seen, um, it's interesting, a lot of companies are wanting to send experience type, type of gifts and things um, like virtual workout classes, but it's very different um, what recipients are actually choosing. The most popular gifts really thematically are things for the home. Um, we're seeing a huge spike in things like bath products um, and anything that is around kind of creating uh, an experience of wellness, as well as items that enhance the home office. So things like plants, um, things like just uh, desk, desk tools, and um, uh, you know, predictably, uh, that's something that uh, has been a huge uptick this year. What about vendors? A lot of us tend to go straight to places like Amazon because it's so easy and we're kind of lazy, but it's hard to find smaller minority-owned businesses and businesses that you want to reward with, with uh, your patronage. How do you do that in terms of finding the right vendors to create a selection of gifts for, for customers? Absolutely. So something that we have seen um, increase in importance significantly is companies wanting to support a diverse set of makers and small businesses. And Loop and Tie has always been designed around making sure that companies can easily discover and access um, these kinds of businesses. So um, all of our collections feature items made from minority-owned businesses and, um, and businesses, frankly, that really need these orders this year. And so companies are, are really choosing to, to use Loop and Tie to support those, those businesses. And recipients, um, that's something that's also really important to them. We see that data through the thank you notes, mm. and we also see it through the redemption pattern. So you mentioned charities, and, um, and charities have been a top five redemption choice across all of our collections. What's the biggest change you've had to make to your business model because of the pandemic, and do you think it'll be permanent? So we've actually not had to make any changes to our business model. Um, we're, I think, in a, in a fortunate minority that has already um, has always been designed around really empowering this kind of virtual engagement. Um, I think as we look towards the future, I think you know the remote workplace is here to stay, and so this type of desire and demand for virtual tools that really bridge virtual to in real life is something we'll continue to see. And um, 
you know, it's something that, as I mentioned, we've seen within our redemption patterns, people are not choosing the virtual experiences. They're choosing something they can physically hold. And that builds that continued memory and that continued relationship uh, that the companies are really looking to, uh, to support when they're sending gifts. Great stuff. Sarah Rodell, really interesting conversation there. Sarah is founder of Loop and Tie. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.